We are really excited to be here at TCM tonight because I have with me my wonderful nephew, John Michael Crockett. Now, do I call you John Michael or do I call you John? John. John. We're going by John now. He grew up being John Michael or Juan Miguel. I'm sorry, I had to embarrass you for just a little bit, but now he's John. And we love him very much. And we're going to find out what John means in just a little bit. But before we start our show, we're going to do what we always do, and we're going to open with a word of prayer. Father God, we just love you so much, and we thank you for this opportunity to just talk about you and about your love and about your grace and your mercy. And God, I just pray that you would be with each and every person that's listening here tonight, God. I just pray that you would touch their hearts, that you would talk to them, and that they would feel your grace and love and mercy, and they would know that you are for them and that you have a plan for them, God. We thank you for John. We thank you for what you're doing in his life, Lord, and we just pray that you would use this show to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, the reason why we're having John Michael, I'm sorry, John, <laughs> you're going to have to hit me. I'm sorry. <laughs> the reason why we have John tonight is because all summer long on TCM, we have been talking about not wasting your summer. We have been talking about investing in others. And we've been talking about service projects and doing those things that help the community, help the world around you to make a difference for Christ. And we know that some of you have taken that challenge, like Michael, who's part of our um, TCM group that gets together with us and chats on Friday or Thursday nights. I just went blank for a minute. He went to New Orleans, and he did a service trip there, and just God really used him, and he enjoyed that so much. And then Abby, our own Abby, we've talked about that. She went to Kosova, and she did a mission trip there, and hopefully we'll be able to have her on to talk about her mission trip. And um, another girl that I know of just got back from Africa, so she has an amazing story to tell, I'm sure. But we want to talk to John tonight, because John went on a mission trip, and you just got back when? A week and a half ago. A week and a half ago, so it's still pretty fresh on your mind. And where did you go uh, on a mission trip? To Wales. To Wales. Okay. And where is Wales, for those who don't know? In the UK. The UK. That's awesome. So you went to London too, right? Yeah, we landed in London. Okay. And got on a bus for three hours. Oh, so you didn't get to tour London or anything. You just got to... Um, the last day before we came home, mm -hmm. we got to spend that day walking mm -hmm. around London. Cool. So. Was it raining? Yeah. Yeah. They say it rains it in London all the time. Rain. <laughs> it's all over there. Yeah. Did it drizzle? Did, you said it did drizzle like and well, drizzle. constant drizzle. Yeah. <laughs> some people would not like that, and some people would like that. I don't think I would like the constant drizzle. I do like some sunshine. It was, I don't know. But the weather like was nice. It, yeah. Because we're in the thick of summer, and it's like 100 degrees here, but it was like what there? The high was 66, and that <sighs> was their summer. Oh, wow. They said so did they ever go swimming outside? Not if it drizzles and it's only it was like degrees. five or six days the whole summer that they actually get the nice weather to do that. Oh so wow! They don't get too often. Oh, so well, I don't think I like that. I like to swim and I like to to suntan, and I shouldn't. I'm going to die early, I'm sure. But you know, you being in Wales, is it like America? No, not no. at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> so how was it to be like in a different culture? Um. It was kind of refreshing, actually, mm -hmm. seeing new faces, yeah. hearing new accents, yeah. seeing how green it is over there. Yeah. So, I guess it would be green if it's constantly it, drizzling. It was very green, <laughs> and there were sheep everywhere. Really? Sheep? Yeah. Oh, I love sheep. What is it about sheep? They're just like a, a calm, peaceful creature. I guess. I don't know. They make nice shirts. They do. <laughs> yes. We need their wool. Um, <laughs> So, what did exactly did you do while you were in Wales? Um, well, there were two groups there. There was the elderly group that mm -hmm. went to the retirement homes over there. And my group, which I think there was more of us, we went into the comprehensive schools over there, mm -hmm. which is like their high school and junior high combined. Okay. And we went in there, and uh, the adult band would go in there and you know, play music for them, kind of bring them in. The youth band would go play some songs. And then um, I think that was, like, during their lunch. And uh, after that, we had flyers to hand out to them as they were leaving for mm -hmm. the 
big concerts that we were having. Right. And at those, we would, um, they'd play music for about 30 minutes, and then um, Mark would get up there and, uh, you know, tell them what was next, what was going to happen after that. And then Michael would get up there and tell them, start talking to them about Jesus, tell them about our beliefs and everything like that. And um, just kind of, you know, talk to them about it and then, you know, try to get them uh, to, uh, you know, if they felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to them. Yeah. Like they felt that they wanted that. You right. know, to ask Jesus into their heart and uh, have them come down. And uh, they, one of us, you know, we all had our red shirts. Mm -hmm. We would go over there with our little stuff to fill out and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, kind of tell them, you know, what happens when you become a Christian and everything else, just kind of talk them through it. Yeah. And That's awesome. So yeah. this is this is a group from First West mm -hmm. that, and they go every year, right? Yes. Do you know how many years they've been doing this? I think this is their fourth year. The fourth year. That might not be right. but Yeah. Well, do you, Wales, is it like... Like only, what's the percentage of the population that's Christian? I think it was 2%. 2%. I was thinking that it was just a really small yeah, percentage. Yeah, very minute. 2% yeah. of Wales is Christian. That means that the church is very, very small yeah. over there. Yeah, there was only a handful of students that knew what Christianity was. Wow. And Jesus? Yeah. That's crazy. Well, you know, they would... They actually have a class on religion. Mm -hmm. It's not like our schools, because ours just speak about Christianity. They just talk about all of their religions. Oh, yeah. So some of them knew of it, but, you know, they weren't into it, I guess. Right, so. right. No, probably not as immersed in it as we are yeah. in our culture. I mean, we almost take it for granted. We hear Jesus and God all the yeah. time. So there it really stood out to them to mm -hmm. hear the gospel. The ones that were Christian over there, they were, like, you know, strong in their faith, too. Yeah. So, I mean, that handful of them, they were very faithful. That's awesome. So. And that's such a testament to us. You know, yeah. we take it for granted, and we take our relationship for granted, and it shows. Yeah. Whereas there, it's 2% of the population knows Christ, and 2% of the population is committed to live for Christ. Yeah. It's a big difference. So do you think, you know, since you were in the school system and you got to see the teenagers there, do you see similar? Did you, you think they were like our teens, like it was going into an American school, or what are some differences that you saw? Um, well, they all had to wear uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Which, goodness we don't. Yeah, most. <laughs> um, no, it definitely wasn't like going into an American school. Theirs were set up differently. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you got like kids, you know, this tall. Yeah. Walking around, and they're like thirteen. Wow. They're like how? <laughs> So <laughs> that's the sheep milk. They need I cow's so. milk. <laughs> <laughs> um, really? So there are they littler over there? Really? Unless our thirteen-year-olds are smaller too, and I just haven't noticed. Well, but they were really small. Really? Yeah. And then that's interesting. I want to say when they got more towards you know sixteen, seventeen, they just like shot up. Really? So they started was, drinking the cow milk. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy so the little one well I guess too also when you're in a high school setting you are seeing them older yeah so they are bigger but then if it's junior high so that could be as small as maybe sixth grade to 12th grade because the whole yeah. school thing is different there because their school like they don't have sixth grade Sixth grade for us would be there year seven. Mm -hmm. So whatever your grade you're in here, if you'd go over there, it'd be year and then basically the next grade. Right. So. Oh, that's weird. I would be starting university over there. Right, exactly. And that's another thing that they do differently. Like you go through school and then after you get through that, then you decide what track you're going to go. Yeah. You either go university and go the educational track to be a professional or mm -hmm. you go trade school. And that's something different that, that we don't, we don't, well, we do it, but yeah, we, we don't, do it. it's not like generally accepted. Most yeah. people say go to college, but there you can do either yeah, it's one. either one. I yeah. think whatever you choose to do, I think you have to stick to that. 
Yeah, I think so too. So. It's really strange. You know, here you could start in a trade and then decide, oh, I want more education and I want to do that. But there, yeah. once you pick your track, that's the track you yeah, go. Yeah, you're stuck doing So, that. you know, that's one of the liberties that we have being in America. You can kind of pick and choose a little bit more. Well, um, I've got my questions on here. My phone just went blank. Hold on just a second. So I want to know <clears throat> what the most memorable moment of the trip was, or if there's two, but... Um, like for me personally? Yeah, or? for you personally. Like what is one thing that you just feel, I mean, that stands out to you? Even now when you think about the trip, it's that moment. Uh, when I gave my testimony. Really? <laughs> and that's so awesome because I think it was just a few weeks ago we were talking about on our show, we were talking about the importance of giving our testimonies mm -hmm. and how a lot of high schoolers, a lot of teens don't know how to do that. They've not been taught. They don't know what that consists of. So that can be pretty scary to feel yeah. like you're on the spot. So had you ever given your testimony before that time? No. You hadn't? Mm -mm. So did they ask you to give your testimony, or is it something that God compelled you to do? I felt led to do it. Yeah. Those were the only times that I really spoke on the trip was when I felt led to. And that's so, so important. Yeah. And we talked about that too, you know, not to get hung up in what am I, su what am I supposed to say, but mm -hmm. just to kind of let the Spirit lead you. And if you're listening to Him, then He'll guide you with what part of your testimony to share. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really, really amazing. So you were a little bit scared. Tremendously. <laughs> <laughs> but did you see any fruits? I mean, did you see uh, any results from sharing your testimony? Um, I can't really say. Yeah. Because I wasn't around them very often. We were at a different school every day. Right. So um, I feel that it spoke to them, though. Yeah. Because when I was giving it just their, their reaction reactions. to it. so. Yeah, and the thing is, you can share your testimony, and you can feel, it. well, first of all, if you know, if God has led you to do it, that there's uh -huh. there's a reason for it. So, you may never see exactly what that reason was, but it definitely had reason, and God is yeah. using your testimony to do a work. I, to, I certainly believe that. But I had heard, because my uh, father, his grandfather, was also on the trip, but I had heard that there was a young lady who yes. went up and accepted Christ, and it was largely based on sharing your testimony. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So, did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> okay. Well, it was. So, you know, even though he didn't know that, um, there was a young woman who was there, and she was touched by his testimony, and she later in the week accepted Christ as her Savior. So, that's awesome. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to cry. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. I have some more questions for you. Okay, these may be a little bit deeper, but I want you to really think about this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes, again, okay. What did you learn about God on the mission trip? What did God teach you about himself through this? He showed me more of his love and his mercy and that he's much bigger than, you know, what I think or thought of him. Mm -hmm. So he showed me that there's a lot more to him than you know, what I was thinking. Right. You know, he showed me he wasn't just some high ruler that's, you know, counting down your sin. Yeah, you know, every time you screw up, he's got tally marks. Right, going. right. So, I mean, he showed me a lot, and it really built my faith and helped me in my walk. So That's awesome. And you learned what your name means over there. Can you share that? Well, I might have this backwards. Um, I That's mean, okay. They won't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can tell them your name means anything. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We're going to tell you the truth. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I met this guy's name was Johannes, mm -hmm. which is Hebrew for John. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if when you translate my name into Hebrew, it changes to Johannan. Oh, okay. Into Hebrew, which would, which is son of grace. I like that. Yeah. Son of grace. <laughs> and if you know this guy, 
just tell you, he has a heart of grace and love, and he is just a blessing to be in my family, but also to know. So, you know, you find him on Facebook. He's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you get all these friend requests. <laughs> or <I'm Leslie. laughs> Okay, so that's awesome. So you learned about God, that he's bigger than, than just that ruler yeah. demanding ruler tallying our sins which is really important and that's one thing that we talk to them about a lot it's about how we're so sin conscious but we need to be more Christ conscious mm -hmm. and more grace conscious and so I love that that was one of the lessons that you learned okay so a little bit deeper what did God teach you about yourself on this trip about myself that I beat myself up too much. Really? Yes. What do you beat yourself up about? How I feel like I have to be perfect, you know? Yeah. I can't sin at all, and that leads me into more. Yeah. And he basically told me to stop. Stop. Because <laughs> when I stop and I just accept that I can't be perfect, and that's when he can use me, and I can follow him better. Right. So that's awesome. And that's really hard for us to do because we're we're almost conditioned to um, to think in that sin consciousness. Like I've done something wrong. I'm going to do something wrong. I have failed. Mm -hmm. I've you know, so that had to have been a very enlightening experience yes. for you to understand. Not only. Yeah. Enlightening mm -hmm. in the sense that enlightening to the mind, you learned something, but enlightening as in freeing. Mm -hmm. freeing you from that, you know, dominion yeah. of God, which, I mean, he is all powerful, but he is all love and he is all grace. Yes. And so, and then I also wanted to ask you, what did God teach you about others through this trip? Others. He taught me that Welsh folk are very, very polite <laughs> uh, yeah, compared to Americans. I've heard that, that they're just... They're very welcoming and it was it was great. I think we really needed that. Yeah. So. Well, I think that you know a lot of times they'll say that southern hospitality is some of the best hospitality, but now you can say. Yeah. No Welsh <laughs> hospitality. <laughs> can you give us an example of like just how polite they were, or like a story of them being kind of above and beyond? Well. I mean, what they did for the church, you know, us as a church going in there, they were always providing for us, and I mean, they had just so much food out. <laughs> I mean, everywhere we turned, do you want this and this, and every school we went to, they had, you know, food out, you know, for us, you know, tea, Yeah. if we wanted it, yeah. and coffee, and yeah. I mean, it wasn't just that, it was just, as soon as you, like, walked into a room, they were just, you just felt welcome. Yeah. And... I guess it's because they're so open to, you know, the things that we aren't. Right, you know? right. I guess so they, they're not as judging. So Yeah, and that, make, that makes a difference. That's mm -hmm. kind of like what we were talking about um, last week. Larry and I were talking about when, we, when we've been given grace, then we extend grace. And how if we as, you know, believers, we as the church, if we're just judgmental and putting our hand up all the time, then we're not giving a welcoming environment. Yeah. Whereas if we give what we've received and that grace and that love and that mercy, then it's a more welcoming environment. Yeah. And it was crazy because, I mean, it wasn't even, you know, the Christian people that were around. It was even the atheists that were over there. Right. Our atheists here, you know. <laughs> oh, they can be a doozy, but we love you anyway. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even, I mean, believers versus non-believers, it didn't matter. It was just yeah, the culture. It was the culture. That's mm -hmm. really awesome. The one thing I didn't like about their culture is everything was so expensive. Was it? It was. And while we were there, the currency exchange went up. They like oh, gradually no. went up as we were there. So I'm like, I got all this money and I'm getting nothing. Yeah, I know. Were you able to get some souvenirs and stuff like that? I was, yes. Yeah, but not a whole lot. No, not I like that to, exchange rate. I had to spread it out yeah. very wisely. <laughs> exactly. Because I know your sister was going to want something. And I know your mom was because yeah. that's my sister. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's really awesome that you went and... Um, well, one thing, I have to share this story, and I hope I don't embarrass you. I'm not going to try to. Okay. <laughs> but just to give you a glimpse of John Michael's heart, 
Um, my parents were missionaries overseas for years, so they've done some world travel. And one of the promises that they've given all of their grandchildren is that they can pick anywhere in the world to go, and they will take them when they graduate from high school. So that's a really huge thing yeah. that my mom and dad do. And they offered that to John Michael and said, wherever you want to go, son, that's where we'll go. And John Michael wanted to go on a mission trip. Yeah. And yeah. he wanted to experience <laughs> that. And uh, and he has. And God has taught you so much on that yes, mission trip. Definitely. Well, I, I'm so excited that you guys got to hear a little bit about John Michael's testimony. And I want to ask you, John, <laughs> I keep switching John Michael, John. They know who you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can hit me. If you want to find him on Facebook, it's John Crockett. You won't find him over <laughs> on, under John yeah. Michael. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so John, what is something that you would say? If you, you know, we have teens that watch us every, every week, and they talk with us we have some chatting right now some of them may or may not be interested in missions what is it that you can say to them to either encourage them to go on a mission trip if they're thinking about it or even if they're not thinking about it well for for me the whole mission trip you know people go to like cross camp and different church camps you know and that's supposed to you know further your walk but the thing with the mission trip is that you get to do God's will and grow closer mm. to Him. And I mean, that whole 10 days, I was just so full of joy. <laughs> so I love I that. Mean, it was awesome. And there's no expectations. Mm -mm. Especially with us, because we didn't know, you know what we were going to be doing or where we were going to be going, what we needed. So we right. had to be very flexible yeah. with it. And I mean, I think that only made it better. Right. Really. So. Well, I think sometimes, you know, we're, we're involved in church camps and stuff like that at Pollock, and they're, like you said, cross camp and all sorts of different camps that are available. But sometimes they can be so structured mm -hmm. that you're going from place to place, doing activity to activity, that you really don't have the time to really sink in what God's yeah. trying to teach you. And so that's one thing that I've found going on a mission trip is he's constantly talking to you. Yeah. It's like a forever dialogue. And it's like, I got to go away for just a minute. Let me process this and I'll be back to paint, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. And I hope that if you're thinking about a mission trip or if you're just feeling like, you know, I want to do more for Christ. I don't want to fill a pew. I, I don't want to just go to youth group and, uh, feel like I'm doing that and not nothing more. Yeah. Um, I want to encourage you to go like John Michael and, and go on a mission trip. Go out of country if you can. It is expensive. You've got to raise your funds, but it is worth it. It is worth all the time that it takes to do that. And um, those of you who are willing, I'd like you to pray for John because he's back here. And, you know, there's a processing thing that happens when you get back from a mission <laughs> trip or even church camp. You know, you go away, you're isolated, you're in that spot, you feel God, he's talking to you. Um, and then you come home and you're inundated with home life and all of the, you know, all the distractions yeah. and things that we can fall into and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I want you to pray for John that he would just continue to hear God's voice and continue to uh, know what God's will is for him because he did just graduate high school and God has some amazing plans for him. And I'm also, uh, I'm actually going to close in prayer. We don't usually do that, but I'm actually going to close in prayer tonight. And I'm going to pray for those of you who might have gone to camp who might have gone on a mission trip, all of those things. And I'm going to pray that God would give you a source uh, of a group around you that would encourage you, empower you, inspire you to keep on having that dialogue with God, to keep on looking outside of your group and to make a difference in the world around you. So thank you so much, John, for coming on. I love you love so you much. <laughs> and uh, maybe we'll have you back and you can talk to us okay. about other stuff God's doing. So. We're going to close in prayer, and I'll let you go. Okay. <laughs>
Dear God, I just love you so much, and and I just thank you for John, and I thank you for the experience that he had in Wales, God, and I just pray for each and every person that's out there that may be dealing with the the downer of coming back from camp, church camp, or uh, coming back from a mission trip, and and still processing that. God, I just pray that you would guard their hearts in Christ Jesus. I pray that you would continue that fire in them to want to seek and do outside of what everybody else is doing, but to be used for your glory, God. I just pray that every day their prayer would be, Lord, use me. And your promises is if we ask you that and if we seek your face, that we will find you and you will use us, Father God. So I pray that you would use John. I pray that you would use all of those who are who are seriously seeking you and seeking to be used of you. God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for this night and for this young man and for all who are with us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. We love you. And uh, Larry will be back next week and probably doing some more impersonations that we missed out on this week because I tend to be more boring. <laughs> <laughs> we love you and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. We are clear. Oh, look, it's Larry. I, I did not like this. You. You talk too much. You. You not talk enough. <laughs> you know I probably will take me to edit this. <laughs> Can Do you have any idea how hard it is to work with these two? It is impossible. You want to be on show? Good. You want show? You fire. You you want show? You want your own show? You got it. Come.